let me welcome you to the 10th lecture of drilling and blasting technology course. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss about the drilling machine. Uh, there are basically two lectures on the drilling machine. So, this is the first lecture on the drilling machine. Uh, like every class, let us retrospect our previous lectures. In previous lectures, we understand the drillability. Uh, we have found that drillability is very, very important. We understand how our machine has to be selected based on that drillability of rock. We have also understood the purpose of drillability and the different experimental procedure to evaluate the drillability. So, we have seen there are uh, one is European procedure, another is the Chinese procedure, uh, both are more or less similar procedure. Uh, in uh, uh, European procedure, it is carried out by the uh, miniature drilling, where Chinese procedure it is carried out by the uh, impact, mostly impact penetration. So, that is why this is little bit uh, more or less similar, but however, the results obtained from both are more or less similar. So, this is our uh, this we have already covered. Now, in this class, our learning objective is to know what are the different drilling machines available to carry out drill drilling a hole. Uh, so, that we can place our explosive inside that hole for blasting purpose. And second one is to uh, understand the classification of this drilling machines, their applications at various situations. So, this is our main objective, the this objective will remain same in the next class also. Uh, on this plot objective, we will try to discuss what are the different drilling machines, how they are working. And uh, we understand their classification also. So, if we are classifying the drilling machine based on the drilling manner, it can be classified in two way. One, uh, one is that manual drilling, second one is the mechanized drilling. So, as it is given The manual drilling is basically carried out with the light equipment and the drilling is carried out with the hand held of a apparatus. That means, the reaction force of the drill bit onto the rock is basically experienced in the human body. That means, the human hand is basically which is giving the thrust that is also getting the uh, reaction force. So, that is why this handheld equipments are drilling machines are always lightweight equipments and a significant thrust is not allowed because then it may damage the human tissue. So, this small operations for small operation these machines are used, these machines are used for the smaller size also and that is why these are not very costly machines. So, that is why as the thrust given is uh, limited, the diameter of the drill hole has to be limited for the manual drilling machines. The modern handheld rock drills are available, which are little bit lighter in weight and convenient to use. Most of these drill machines are either pneumatically operated or electrically hydraulically operated in the most of the cases. Uh, these are basically the major uh, source of energy for the manual drilling machines. So, let us see some of the manual handheld drilling machines you can see this is the pneumatically operated jackhammer. Uh, this is pneumat same pneumatically operated jackhammer, but you can see there is a air leg which is basically taking the weight of the drill machine and the human being is only al giving the thrust onto the drill machine, so that the drill rod receive a thrust here. In this case, the Benefit is that weight of the drill machine is basically the major source of the thrust and this person is in little bit comfort position. 
he is not uh, he is not have to give a, a thrust through his hand. The same uh, drill machine is also there pneumatic drill machines are little bit heavier, but these drill machines are little bit lighter where the motive power which is pneumatically provided here, here the motive power is hydraulically provided in this machine. Uh, electrical drill, mach drill machines are also uh, possible, this is the uh, internal combustion uh, drill machine where you can see in the internal combustion this is the storage tank. So, on ignition this storage tank is basically giving the source of energy by ignition of that and so that uh, diesel or petrol whichever power it is that power is converted to the energy and that is being utilized in this case. Here, the electrical power is used, this is the motor which is run by the electrical, here the engine and this part is the motor, this part is the engine and this is basically giving us the power and this air leg is common in all the cases basically to take care of the weight of the machine. So, prime power may be electrical, may be pneumatic, may be hydraulic or may be uh, diesel or whichever it is. Okay. So, this may be the prime uh, motive power, but uh, the that is converted to the mechanical power using this machines. Now, the next one from the manual it is the mechanized drilling, where the B large drilling equipments are used which are mounted on the rigs, operator can sit away from the rig and control the operation of the rig from a comfortable position. So, basically drilling is carried out by the drilling rig, drilling rig and the operation of the drilling rig is controlled from a cabin or somewhere else. It may be possible that this control cabin and drill rigs are mounted on a same truck, mounted on a same platform or truck or it may be mounted differently. The rig may be separate and the operator's cabin may be separate. These structures or chassis can themselves be mounted on the wheels of trucks and either be self propelled or towable. So, that is also provisions are there for the mechanized drilling. So, this is two cases of mechanized drilling, you can see this is for the surface, this is for the underground situation, this is called jumbo drill, uh, this is the uh, crawler mounted uh, drill. So, this wagon drills you can see these are self propelled and this is the drill rig, drill rig is containing the drill rod which is drilling, additional drill rods are also there and all this operation of this movement of this are controlled by the operator in the operator cabin. Same, uh, same uh, system is there also you can see this is twin boom simultaneously two holes can be drilled here and this is made for the underground purpose that is why the height is kept very limited and this drilling can be carried out in the front direction. Uh, angling drilling all is also possible nowadays most modern mechanized machines are completely computerized, computerized. So, the penetration depth, penetration rate uh, all these uh, are uh, uh, can be observed feed, uh, feed levels, thrust uh, all these can be observed or controlled by the operator. Similarly, the drilling angle is uh, can also be automatically uh, controlled. Same provision is given here also and in this drilling we can uh, drill up to 350 mm dia holes also, those are also possible at this uh, using this type of drilling. And if you see the modern drilling equipment here 8 boom jumbos, 
eight boom jumbos are also available where these are the twin boom two booms are here available here but instead of two booms eight booms are also available that type of jumbo machines are also available in the market so modernization of the uh, mechanized drilling has been carried out and a lot of advantage and uh, 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 huge uh, modern drilling equipments are also available in the market now as we have discussed already drilling method can be classified in two rotary and percussive uh, we will mostly discuss on to the rotary percussive because this is the most common drilling technique used for all the mechanized drilling. So, rotary percussive drilling is the most classic system for drilling blast hole and widely used in mining and civil engineering since the middle of the 19th century. Uh, motive power may be anything, the appearance of hydraulic power. Uh, also uh, modernize this uses of these systems. Uh, this rotary percussive drilling can be classified basically in two part, one is top hammer part, another is down the hole hammer type. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss on, on the top hammer part, we will discuss the down the hole hammer part in the next class. So, let us see what is top hammer drilling carried out in the rotary percussive drilling. So, rotary percussive drilling is basically having four actions one is the percussion where piston inside the rock drill strikes the tail end of the rod or bit itself and generate the shock wave which transmitted through the bit or directly upon the DTH in case of DTH. So, basically this is the drill steel in the mouth of the drill steel the bit is fitted hammering action is carried out here. So, the shock generated is basically transmitting here the hammering force acting on this crushing is carried out at this then on the rotation of this the shearing of the cracked portion is occurred to so that the chip will come out. When this hammering action is carried out from the top this is called top hammer when this hammering action is carried out this hammering action is carried out providing a, a pneumatically or hydraulically hammer here and this hammering action is carried out on the bit there is no movement of the drill steel, but for this hammer only the drill bit is oscillating and generating the shock wave hammering the rock then it is called down the hole hammer drill. So, basically percussion is given either from the top or from the down the hole. Then the rotation is given, rotation is given to the rod either by top hammer or by the down the hole hammer. Means again the rotary action is also given in the drill steel in case of top hammer and in the uh, bit from the down the hole hammer. Uh, often uh, the rotary action is given for the down the hole hammer also from the top also. Then the feed or thrust or the load, the feed force is required to keep the sunk in contact that means a force a thrust has to be given in the top of the drill steel whether it is the down the hole or it is the top hammer. In both the cases this thrust has to be given so that the bit must remain in contact with the rock always there should not be any air gap. So, that is why this contact must be there and feed or thrust load is basically assuring this one. So, feed or feed force is required to keep the sank 
in contact with the drill and the drill bit must be in contact with the rock. This ensure maximum impact energy should be transferred from the bit to the rock. So, this basically feed is basically required for consistent transferring of the energy from the machine to the rock. And finally, the requirement is the flushing where the cut chips, the chips has to be taken out from the hole and for that the flushing is required. This flushing most common flushing is the air, water, mist, foam, often we use bentonite etcetera as a flushing medium which can be utilized for sealing the holes also. So, our side part of the holes also we mix bentonite in the flushing medium. So, basically these are essentially flushing is essentially required as we have discussed earlier also. This is essentially required for taking out these chips for the cooling of the drill bit and uh, also for uh, repairing of the side walls of the holes also. So, these are essentially required flushing is essentially required. Now, details of the top hammer drill let us discuss. Top hammer drilling is the most widely used rotary percussive drilling though nowadays for the deep holes we prefer down the hole. Here the impact energy is generated in the piston which is striking the adapter that is the tail end of the rod. Then the rod it is transferring it the its energy to the bit and bit is acting on to the rock. So, basically from the rock drill from there rock drill is basically hammering on to the sank adapter. So, the sank adapter is transferring the hammering force to the drill rod. Some drill rod the drill bit is receiving the force and finally, the force is going to the So, basically let us look into this. If you look into this figure you can see this is the hammering action is going on. Hammering action is going on onto the top. Then this top is getting the hammering force this is the sunk sunk is transferring it onto the rod. There may be n number of rod coupled with the coupler. Then the rod is transferring it into the bit. So, finally, the bit is transferring the energy into the rock. So, the top hammer so, the top hammer method is primarily used for drilling in hard rock and up to a limited diameter and up to a limited depth also. For a limited diameter and small dia holes, the performance or the penetration rates are considered good. All the handheld operators are mostly be working based on the top hammer type. Heavy hydraulic rock drills with high impact power are also used for the large, uh, large holes. But the problem of this, but the problem of this top hammer drill is that this top hammer drills cannot be used for the deep holes. Top hammer drill can be further classified, top hammer drill can be further classified while the pneumatic motive power is used. Most of the cases we use pneumatic motive power for the top hammer drill specially for the handled drills. Uh, this allow the change of the direction of the compressed air from the cylinder. So, the compressed air pushes the piston with reciprocating strikes on the adapter 
or the tail of the drill rod through which the shock wave is transmitted to the bit where the chisel crushes the rock. So, this is for handheld uh, drill machines, specially for the jackhammers, this principle is used. Along with each strike, the piston, the drill rod rotates a certain angle 5 to 15 degrees. So, that means the moment the drill rod is being pushed forward, it takes an angular rotation, it takes an angular rotation and this angular rotation is utilized for the having the rotary action. Now, this is the photographs of the jackhammer you can see and if you look into this you can see this is the rifle bar, this is the rifle bar which is basically allowing the rotation of the piston. So, as the bar is a little bit uh, a rota uh, rotary action, so the piston is allowed to move like this, so automatically a rotation occurs into the piston. So, as it is moved uh, in the forward direction, uh, the piston is basically uh, allowing a little bit 5 to 15 degree rotation here. So, these are the different components, this is the air control valve for drilling, this is the ratchet and pawl, uh, this is the uh, operator stand on this side, uh, this is the throttle valve uh, handle, this is rifle bar we have already discussed air control uh, valve which uh, uh, allows the relief of, of uh, ex exhaust air, uh, then that blower valve, this is the piston, this is the chuck which is holding the rod, and this is the steel retainer and uh, this is the thread of the drill steel. So, this is basically different components of a handled jackhammer drill. Uh, if you look into the uh, hydraulically operated drill, uh, this is uh, in this case we are using hydraulic oil as the uh, motive power and by this way hydraulic hammers are uh, became popular. Uh, this high power rock drills uh, doubled the drilling capacity, this also improved the drilling environment as the uh, material is not leaked out as air is coming into the surface, uh, coming into the atmospheric air that may create problem. So, here there is no case of spilling, drilling accuracy, mechanization and automations are also improved in case of hydraulically operated handheld drill machines. So, Hydraulic drill rigs were mostly used in underground operations, uh, this also nowadays used in the surface drilling also, uh, but in small project this may not be uh, very very efficient as you have to keep a huge hydraulic oil pool. Some cases it may be disadvantageous where high initial investment is required because of this, more complex operation is there, repairing may not be that much easy for these machines, you may have some expert uh, mechanic for that and maintenance required, uh, maintenance for requ maintenance requirement expert expertization is required for hydraulic drill uh, handheld drill machines. So, these are the figures of hydraulic handheld drill machine, uh, if you can see this is more or less similar to our uh, pneumatically operated drill machine, uh, this is the piston at the front end, this piston moves backward in this case and uh, this is the rear portion of the piston and this is the piston moves forward. So, this is uh, the uh, uh, schematic diagram of the hydraulically operated uh, drill machines, handle drill machines. Uh, this is the cross section you can see. So, let us stop our uh, uh, 
uh, top hammer based drill machines at this uh, uh, point. We will continue this lecture uh, with the uh, down the hole hammer drills in the next class. Thank you.